Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey, reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 65. One time, during the novitiate, when Mother Directress sent me to work in the ward's kitchen, I was very upset because I could not manage the pots, which were very large. The most difficult task for me was draining the potatoes, and sometimes I spilt half of them with the water. When I told this to Mother Directress, she said that, with time, I would get used to it and gain the necessary skill. Yet the task was not getting any easier, as I was growing weaker every day. So I would move away when it was time to drain the potatoes. The sisters noticed that I avoided this task and were very much surprised. They did not know that I could not help in spite of all my willingness to do this and not spare myself. At noon, during the examination of conscience, I complained to God about my weakness. Then I heard the following words in my soul. From today on, you will do this easily. I shall strengthen you. That evening, when the time came to drain off the water from the potatoes, I hurried to be the first to do it, trusting in the Lord's words. I took up the pot with ease and poured off the water perfectly. But when I took off the cover to let the potatoes steam off, I saw there in the pot, in the place of the potatoes, whole bunches of red roses, beautiful beyond description. I had never seen such roses before. Greatly astonished and unable to understand the meaning of this, I heard a voice within me saying, I change such hard work of yours into bouquets of most beautiful flowers, and their perfume rises up to my throne. From then on, I have tried to drain the potatoes myself, not only during my week when it was my turn to cook, but also in replacement of other sisters when it was their turn. And not only do I do this, but I try to be the first to help in any other burdensome task, because I have experienced how much this pleases God. O inexhaustible treasure of purity, of intention, which makes all our actions perfect and so pleasing to God. O Jesus, you know how weak I am, but then ever with, be then ever with me. Guide my actions and my whole being, you who are my very best teacher. Truly, Jesus, I become frightened when I look at my own misery, but at the same time I am reassured by your unfathomable mercy which exceeds my misery by the measure of all eternity. This disposition of soul clothes me in your power. O joy that flows from the knowledge of oneself, O unchanging truth, your constancy is everlasting. When I fell sick, probably the beginning of consumption, after my first vows, and when, despite the kind and solicitous care of my superiors and the efforts of the doctor, I felt neither better nor worse. Remarks began to reach my ears, which inferred that I was making believe. With that, my suffering was doubled, and this lasted for quite a long time. One day I complained to Jesus that I was being a burden to the sisters. Jesus answered me, You are not living for yourself, but for souls, and other souls will profit from your sufferings. Your prolonged sufferings will give them the light and strength to accept my will. There were two types of sisters in the convent uh, at the time of St. Faustina. Sisters of the first choir, who were those who were educated. They were the ones who became the superiors, the formators, the treasurers of the convents, etc. And then those of the second choir, those who performed the manual labor, work in the kitchen, the garden, the laundry, answering the door, etc. This is what St. Faustina did. She was very intelligent, but she had only had a very basic education when she came to the convent, and so she was put into the second choir. And then the community ran homes for wards or students. They were morally neglected or difficult girls who had been sent to the sisters from social services or by the parents, or some came of their own accord to do penance. In this passage, we hear of a miracle that took place in the kitchen when Jesus gave St. Faustina the strength to drain the potatoes. 
She was very weak because of her physical illnesses and sufferings, part of being a victim soul. And then the potatoes turned into beautiful roses as a sign to St. Faustina of the value of her sufferings offered to God. The other sisters misunderstood St. Faustina's sufferings, often thinking she was just trying to slack off. But Jesus told her that she was to not live for herself. It didn't matter if the other sisters misunderstood her. She was to live for the souls for whom she was offering up her sufferings. So this is a reminder for us of the value of offering things up to God and making sacrifices.